Well, the right approach to antibiotic use in end-of-life care really comes back to using the principles of palliative care and symptom management and just applying it to antibiotics. So by doing that, we're really doing ourselves a favor by improving patient care and also doing society a favor by contributing to antimicrobial stewardship efforts. We're able to redefine what's appropriate antibiotic use for our hospice end-of-life care patients. Uh, so I think some of the takeaways from my session um, would be to really focus in on the fact that we are the experts for palliative care and we can do what we already know and apply it to antibiotics. It's not something that needs to be uh, really difficult for us as palliative care providers or hospice care providers. It's just kind of reframing how we're looking at antibiotic use in our end-of-life care patients and making sure that we really have a symptom-driven goal for use of that antibiotic um, and of course making sure that it's it's appropriate for that particular patient, whether it be based on their prognosis, um, based on their current clinical status or functional status, and also based on what the patient and family expectations are. Why antibiotic use in end-of-life care? That's a really good question. Um, I've actually always had an interest in infectious diseases and antibiotic use, and I think that there is a need for us in hospice and palliative care to be able to address that because there is this global concern of growing bacterial resistance, and it touches all facets of healthcare, whether it be outpatient, inpatient, um, long-term care facilities, and we serve a population where they can really um, still be a part of, of a lot of those um, locations of care. So they can be cared for in a hospital setting, that we might be getting them from a hospital setting. They could be, uh, actually, you know, more than 40% of our hospice patients get care in a nursing home, and that's where we see a lot of our inappropriate antibiotic prescribing up to 75%. So there's a lot of opportunity for us to help uh, with the improvement of antibiotic use. And then it also, again, bringing it back to the patient, will serve our patient's best interest by not exposing them to you know, potentially unnecessary side effects that could be pretty burdensome to them. Um, you know, Think about nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, symptoms that they're commonly dealing with already, and then we're throwing another antibiotic on top of that, um, which can, can further worsen that. So what I think that they need to do is, um, you know, really step back to the basics and think about, you know, one, the plan of care as a good tool for this, having those goals of care discussions with the patients and the caregivers and making sure that they're documenting it. You know, asking them, patients have preferences, asking them, do you want to use antibiotics? Do you want to go to the hospital if you need an IV antibiotic? Um, and then helping them by giving them education things that we know about antibiotic use. You know, an IV therapy could uh, potentially expose you to additional risks um, in terms of, you know, placing the IV, or the toxicity risk could be higher because we're pumping a drug straight into your bloodstream. So giving that information to them um, helps them make a more informed decision about whether or not they want to do that. And then we can, again, go back to the basics and document it in that plan of care and continue to redevelop that plan of care with them. Um, I also, you know, encourage clinicians to just think about, you know, step one, you're faced with a suspected infection. The first question you are asking is not what antibiotic should I use, it's what symptom management approach should I use? Do I want to use an antibiotic as a part of that plan? Um, that's something to be determined, but making sure that we always have those non-pharmacologic and non-antibiotic medications on board to help support that symptom management. Area of interest, so I, I did a um, pharmacy residency, uh, PGY1 back in 2009, um, and I was very interested in my antimicrobial stewardship and infectious disease rotation, but I knew it wasn't one of my strengths. Um, I had a passion for pain management and palliative care, and hence going into the pain management palliative care residency for my second year postgraduate studies. Um, but I've always kind of held on to that interest um, in infectious disease management and antibiotic use. And you know, back in 2013, when we started to hear a lot more from the CDC and the World Health Organization in regards to the urgency um, in, in improving antibiotic use to slow the growth of resistance, I thought, hey, well, you know, maybe I have an opportunity here to pair this with um, what I'm already doing in hospice and palliative care because we know, you know, for a fact that antibiotics are not benign treatments and they can cause significant um, dis uh, discomfort to patients in terms of their side effects or drug interactions.